A March 2024 USA Today article states marriage rates have gone from 5.1 per 1,000 to 6.2 out of 1,000 people in 2022. What's that mean? That means that marriage rates actually went up from 2020 to 2022. Let's talk about that. I'm a relationship coach with five years of coaching experience and 20 years of happy marriage and successful business experience. A lot of people get confused on these ratios. So 6.2 per 1,000 people, that sounds really small. Well, that's out of 1,000 people in the general population. That's over 2 million weddings in the United States in 2022. That's the first time since 2019 where it was over 2 million. It's way under the highest recorded in history, which was 16.2 per 1,000, and that happened right after World War II. Maybe it was a little higher before that, but the, the U.S. government hasn't been keeping track of these stats. I believe it was actually at the turn of the century of the 1900. That's when they started keeping record of this. But 16.2 per 1,000 is the highest recorded in history, and in 2022, it was 6.2 per 1,000. That's a, that's a pretty dramatic decrease, but that doesn't mean that people aren't getting married. Let's just get that straight. So let's talk about 2020. What happened in 2020? COVID. All right, 5.1 per 1,000. That happened in 2020. That was the lowest rate in recorded history at 5.1 per 1,000. One of the reasons was that a lot of people just weren't getting married. Obviously, you know, weddings weren't going on, churches were closed, uh, just any facility was closed. So people put off their weddings. They didn't want to get married with just themselves. They want to have a party, obviously. So they put off their wedding for a while. This article in the USA Today was arguing that people were making up for lost time between 2020 and 2022. I would agree that with that to a point, but that's not the only message here that's, uh, that's worth recording an episode. So the U.S. marriage rate has declined steadily since the 1980s. The birth rate has followed suit. Basically, it's on the same slope. There's a lot of reasons for that, but the biggest driver, in my opinion, and based on some of the studies that I've seen and some of the, the stats, is basically the women, that women are in the workplace. I don't think there's any question about that. I don't know if you could really argue that, to be honest with you, but women going into the workplace and they're successfully supporting them, themselves financially now. Is that really the only reason why people aren't getting married as much as they were? So that's the question. Why are people not getting married uh, as much? So there's multiple reasons, but in my opinion, the biggest reason is women just don't need men financially anymore. Uh, they don't need to rely on them for the most part. Obviously, some people, uh, some women still do, but not nearly as, as, as often in the, as in the past. That's for women. Now, why are men not getting married uh, or choose not to get married? Well, they don't want to take on the risk financially in case a divorce happens, so they possibly could get ruined financially. So let's talk about the divorce rates a little bit. It's a little skewed. They talk about 50% of couples get divorced, right? Well, you can limit your risk by adhering to certain criteria. So people that get married when they're 25, they're higher educated, and they are in the top 20 percentile of household income, those folks have a tendency to have a much lower chance of divorce, which is actually about 25% as opposed to 50%. The 50% divorce statistic is very skewed. You're talking about all marriages, all divorces. You're talking about people that have been married four or five times. So that statistic is skewed, and it is much more drastic for folks that are in the lower echelon financially. So take those stats with a grain of salt. If you limit your risk by adhering to those three principles or characteristics, you're going to drastically decrease your chances of divorce. And the top 20 percentile of household income, by the way, for the U.S. dollars is $150,000 per year. That's for the entire household. So here comes the pitchforks and torches in the comments. Bring it on. It's all good. I've got thick skin. It's all good. Bring it. 
So there's one constant throughout time when it comes to human relationships. We want to connect with the opposite sex and have kids. That's a constant throughout time. That's an evolutionary need that we have. We want to procreate and we want to connect. We don't want to feel like we're alone in this world, correct? That's not, that has not changed in the past 50 years. Marriage has changed in the last 50 years. Absolutely. So you want connection and you want children. Now, can you have both of those things without being married? Yepers. Absolutely, you can. Yeah, you can. Uh, but marriage in general throughout history, it's a great way to stave off chaos in society. I do wish that the government doesn't have to get involved as much as they do and have such a big impact on marriage, but it is what it is. Life that's completely devoid of marriage would be chaos, but the world would still spin. So some people will choose not to get married or not have kids. It's all good. That's based on your culture that you grow up in, while others do the opposite based on their culture. I have a tendency not to shame people for either one of those things, but obviously my channel is devoted to the folks that want to get married, have kids, have a, a healthy life um, as, as a relationship evolves, and keeping it hot and keeping it sexy. That's, that's what this channel is all about. So if you're one of those people that want to get married, you're welcome. If you're one of those people that don't want to get married, stick around. You might learn something. You know, if you don't like it, it's all good. There's other channels out there that you can tune into. It's it's all good. What I don't want to do is be a zealot and think that I am here to convince you to get married. That's not what I'm here for. I'm here to teach you how to have a great relationship and build on a relationship and fix a relationship that you want and crave. So I'm I'm a huge fan of marriage, but I am no zealot. Sue me. You do you. I'm not one of those people that says marriage is everything. Okay, that's not what I'm, I'm here for. I'm not here to convince you. If you don't want to get married, don't get married. It's all good. But if you, if you want to get married or if you want to fix a relationship that you're in, I'm your guy. Now, when it comes to the statistics, I think the marriage rate and divorce rates are actually stabilizing at this point. You can see the data uh, kind of leveling off at this point. If you look at the graphs, um, you've got big peaks at the end of World War II where it was very, very common for people to get married. It goes back down, and then right around the 1970s or so, it, the marriage rate goes up a little bit again. And then starting in 1980, it goes down, and it's continued that trend up until now, which is 2024. But if you look at the tail of the diagram, it looks to me like it's more stabilizing. I think personally, it's going to hover right around six out of a thousand for a good while. I've seen this trend where people are, are wanting relationships. They want to get married. They just don't know how to do it. That's the kind of trend that I'm seeing in coaching and the people that come to me and the people that I've talked to. Obviously, it's a little skewed because these are the people that actually want the relationships, but I've also seen a ton of people in comments and people in relationship groups where they're just absolutely not sold on marriage. So it's all good. You know, I do think it is stabilizing and I think it's going to hover right around six out of a thousand probably for a good while. Who knows long term, but it seems like things are correcting at this point. That's just my observation. Some just. Some of the stats are telling us that uh, this article is one of them. That's why I wanted to talk about it, uh, because the lowest rate in history was at 2020. That was COVID. And it seems like it's actually going in an upward trajectory. Do I think it's going to go back to 16.2 <laughs> post-World War II era? I don't. But I do think it's going to stabilize right about where we are at this point. Okay. So how do we fix marriage? That's a huge question that I don't see asked a whole lot, to be honest with you. I think that you've got a lot of people that are big proponents of marriage, and you've got the uh, the critics and the, the pitchforks and torches, all right? There's many things that I'd, that I'd argue that we could do to fix marriage, but the most effective way would be to revisit divorce law. How do you fix marriage? I think revisiting divorce law is critical. The divorce laws that we have on the book now, uh, they're 
they're incredibly outdated. Uh, they're really circa 1970s. The world was a much different place in the 1970s. If you make marriage much less risky for men, marriage rates will most likely slowly recover. Make it to the point where it's incentivized to get married as opposed to being almost penalized from a from a man's perspective. I can understand that perspective where guys think it's a little bit too risky to get married. I understand that. I've heard all kinds of things in, in coaching, and I don't blame some guys for thinking that. For instance, in California, if you've been married for 10 years, legally, you are on the hook for alimony for the rest of your ex's life. That's ridiculous. Okay, that's absolutely ridiculous. People are more than capable of taking care of themselves nowadays. And why incentivize somebody financially for doing nothing? That's that's a problem. Uh, that's a huge problem when it, when it comes to divorce law and marriage in general. You're basically almost incentivizing somebody to divorce their husband or wife. Because wives, at this point, 33% of wives are actually the, the, the breadwinners in, in households at this point. So this, that, law will, that law will affect people and women in the future. But <laughs> good luck changing divorce law in this political climate. That's going to be a tall order. I'm not holding my breath at this point, but I do think that if you if you want to fix marriage, look at divorce law and let's do some reforming. Now, time will tell, but one thing is for sure, marriage isn't dead. If 2 million people got married in 2022, marriage isn't dead. So here's to making those 2 million new marriages hot, fresh, and sexy. So if you like this content, please like and share and subscribe. Join my private Facebook group. It's free. Come on in. Marriage isn't dead. Private groups, the name of it. Uh, if you want to talk to like-minded people, some people that actually argue the other point, it's all good. I like, I like debate. I'm not, I'm not shy about it bring it on. Uh, but uh, there's people all over the world in there and uh, it's a good time. There's, there's a lot of good folks. Okay. So until next time, be better than you were yesterday and be desirable.